Good morning, everyone. I hope you're having a beautiful day in the Lord. I have some devotions for you today. There are, I think, three of them short. Um, the first one is about moving together in victory. And the reading is from 2 Peter 1, verse 3 to 11. And it says, Make every effort to add to your faith self-control <laughs> uh, God is willing to do his part in helping you in this battle with evil thoughts but you must be willing to do your part there is a teaching in some Christian circles that if we discover a need for change in our lives we should just passively wait upon God until he accomplishes it that's like if we pray, if we have an addiction, smoking or drinking or whatever, and we petition the Lord with prayer, we just sit and wait for him to just miraculously heal us of that addiction. But it doesn't really work that way, and I can testify to that. Uh, it sounds so spiritual, but actually it borders on profound error. A Christian man once said to me, I would like to be free from a certain sin that I'm involved in, but I find that I'm powerless to break away from it. I asked him what he expected to happen in order for him to find deliverance. And he said, I expect God to take away the desire for this sin and thus set me free. He was saying, in effect, God is responsible for delivering me and my task is to just wait passively until he does so. That view is very unbiblical and what is more, it doesn't work. Although deliverance comes from God, we are the ones who carry it out. Yeah, God gets the credit for it, but we have to agree and we have to be willing. Let that sink in people okay the principle is this you supply the willingness and he will supply the power do you really want to win this battle against evil thoughts if so you can this should just need to show god that you mean business by putting the principles that you know now okay into practice and you will pave the way for his miraculous power to work through you and yes willingness is something that has to be broken like a wild horse okay because although you might be willing your flesh doesn't want what your mind wants and what your heart wants so you might in your inside of you might be willing to allow God but you're going to have to deal with some ups and downs and and it's it may be difficult at time to hang on to your willingness so you may cave and go back uh, into 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 the old pattern again so but yeah you need that willingness you need to allow God to remove it okay and it says here once you have done this life's oppress oppressive and evil thoughts will never be able to break you again and um, here too you can become strong at the broken places a prayer we can say for this his gracious Father, thank you for reminding me that deliverance is a team effort. It involves the Holy Spirit and me. Remember I posted uh, the video about uh, Helen Keller and um, Ann Sullivan, who was um, her teacher, and uh, the, the, the patience that Ann Sullivan had and the tantrums, the demonic tantrums, that Helen Keller had that she would not give up her will to learn and finally finally after I mean the movie you know the whole movie she's fighting with this kid to to 
break her will. And then finally, when she breaks her will and she permits the teacher to help her, she gets it. She understands. See? Um, <clears throat> I supply the willingness, meaning you, and you supply the power, which is the Holy Spirit. Because the Holy Spirit says, you can do nothing without me. Okay? You can do nothing. Um, <clears throat> so team up with the Holy Spirit and... Um, Let's let the Father and you move together into victory. Amen. Okay, and this one is, um, let's see, it's about, you know, living free. And uh, it says here in Philippians 4.13, it says, For I can do everything through Christ who gives me strength. When we are dealing with life-controlling problems, we may begin to think, well, what's the use? You know, I'll never overcome this. I've tried. I failed again and again and again. And I just don't have what it takes to get things right. And you know what? You, you are right. You're probably right in saying that because we really don't have what it takes. But we know that someone else does, and that's Jesus. The Bible promises us that, what, that we can do all things through Christ if we are willing to commit our lives to him he will give us the strength we need to do what is right he will guide us on the right path and he will often send other people to help us yeah I've seen people show up in my life uh, when there was no one there and I needed help and all of a sudden boom there it was hallelujah I tell you, I go to my knees. I know instantly where that came from. In order to receive this strength from Christ, we first need to admit that we need help. Okay, we need to be honest with ourselves and with him and with others. And we need to take our mask of self-sufficiency off. And we need to get real, people. Are you dealing with the problem right now? A problem maybe in your life that seems just hopeless you need to take the first step you need to admit uh, that you can't do it and you need to ask for help uh, ask God for his plan how to tackle this issue ask him for strength through Christ and admit to caring people that you need help sometimes it's hard for us to ask for help and a prayer we can say for this is, Lord, I've been trying everything I know to overcome this problem, but nothing seems to work. I need and desire your strength and your guidance. Help me to be honest about my need with others that you send to me for help. And help me remember that I can succeed through Christ in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. And uh, this one here is the Holy One of Israel um, emphasizes God's uniqueness, otherness, and mystery, as well as his call to his people to become as holy as he is. The Israelites were to be set apart for God, devoted to his service, and committed to honoring his character and reflecting it in all of their relationships. In the New Testament, Jesus was recognized as the Holy One by demons who were threatened by his power and his purity. As believers, we are called to reflect the character of Christ and to be holy even as he is holy. When you pray to the Holy One of Israel, you are praying to the God whose holiness not only encompasses his separation from evil, but his power, his knowledge, and his justice, and his mercy, and his goodness, and his love. A key scripture in Leviticus 19, 1 and 2 says, The Lord said to Moses, Speak to the entire assembly of Israel and say to them, Be holy, because I, the Lord your God, am holy. The Lord said to Moses, speak to the entire assembly of Israel. Yeah, that's what I just read. Speak to the entire assembly of Israel and say to them, 
be holy because I, the Lord, your God, am holy. That's worth repeating, isn't it? As obedient children, do not conform to the evil desires that you had when you lived in ignorance. But as just as he who called you is holy, so be holy in all that you do. For it is written, be holy because I am holy. Praise God for being generous, for being honest, for being truthful, for being just, and for being loving. That God has given us in Christ the power to become holy. All glory to God. Praise Jesus. Hallelujah. And thank you, thank you, Holy Spirit. That's all I have for you today. And I always want to remind you that I love you and Jesus loves you. And to never forget how much Jesus loves you. Okay? I'll be back again with more. But for now, shalom.